Ladies and gentlemen from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Premier Boxing Champions presents our next attraction, brought to you by Tecate, the official beer of boxing, O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better prices, better parts every single day. And Fashion Nova, the number one Google fashion brand in the world. Judging at ringside for this bout, we have Eric Cheek, Julie Letterman, and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a WBC welterweight world title eliminator. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks with red and blue trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Santiago de Cuba in Cuba. He weighed in at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds with a record of 23 wins and four losses. He has 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist and the current world ranked welterweight contender introducing your Danny. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner in this 12-round attraction, wearing black chunks, hailing from Westlaco, Texas. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 147 pounds, with a record of 28 wins, no losses in one draw. He has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the world-ranked welterweight and the undefeated, former lightweight champion of the world, introducing Panterita. And a referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Russell Mora. <laughs> Center ring, gentlemen. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Anything below this line's a foul. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Okwelesen, quiero una pelea limpia. I want a clean fight. God bless. Touch up. Thank you. Good, good luck. Good luck, good luck guys. Kenny Albert, Lennox Lewis, and Joe Goosen back with us. Joe, congratulations on the victory. Thanks, Kenny. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How did it look from here? Look, look good. good. Look good. good, yeah. Were you telling them to throw that left hook? In the change room? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, because I've seen you guys on pads throwing that left hook, so you were practicing it. I had four left-handed world champions, so I know it works against them. All right. Yeah. All right, so Joe back with us. He's made another costume change, and we are underway. Scheduled for 12 rounds. Omar Figueroa Jr. in the black trunks facing your Dennis Ugas. Now, as much as I wanted to see the main event and my fight, I'm really interested in this fight here. Because Ugas is a real accomplished fighter, and Omar Figueroa is a relentless, relentless fighter who can hit you from either side. He goes right handed, left handed, right. We saw that in the Molina fight. Yeah. But I think he's in better shape for this fight. Yeah, his body looks in better shape. Uh, they just banged heads right there when he was in that southpaw position of Ugas. Figueroa coming off the victory over John Molina back in February. That was his first bout in a year and a half. First thing you notice is the size difference. Ugas has really got a looks like a lot of height and reach on him. Although he's sitting in the pocket with, with Figueroa, which is maybe a little unusual considering he's got that big reach advantage. Guys. Yeah, I mean Ugas just threw a right hand and a looping right hand, caught him on the back of the neck a little bit. Yeah, he wrapped around him. But Figueroa is good, doing some good move, head movement from side to side. He's not making himself an easy target. What I've noticed about uh, uh, Ugas already is he's landed like two or three really solid right uppercuts to the belly. And you'll see he, he's a very good counter puncher. If you touch him, he will counter you back. Ugas, an Olympian, bronze medalist back in 2008, representing Cuba, now lives in the United oh! States. Sorry to interrupt with that, Ugas. That was a hell of a left, left to right uppercut from Ugas against uh, Figueroa. And the reason that got through is because Figueroa was changing from left to right. Yeah, that was, and he took it well. You know, uh, Figueroa's got a great chin. Sorry, Kenny. Finish up what you were saying. That's okay, Joe. All right. No, well, I mean, I get excited when I see good punches. Oh, big oh, right oh, by Ugas. And that was that right hand over the top. 
Now that's counted as a knockdown Four. because the rope saved Five. them from going down. So they're going to count that as a knockdown. Seven. Eight. Aki, wait to back up. I didn't hit the ground. I got it. You hit the ropes. Russell Moore, the referee, explained to Figueroa that he hit the ropes, as you said, Joe. So far, Figueroa got caught twice coming in. He's got to be more careful, more defensive-minded coming in when he's when he's coming in against Ugas, because Ugas is a serious oh, puncher. Another big right by Ugas. And Figueroa's a bit wavy right now. He doesn't seem like too steady on his feet. Well, so you that, can, you, that punch definitely affected him. And you know, Figueroa's, you know, really a 40 pounder coming up to 47. I can see, I think you can really see the difference in size and power right now between the two. Let him go. Let him go. Go! No holding. No holding. Well, here we go with the uh, the first. That was that left, and then he's going to zip the right uppercut right up the middle there. He hit him on the side of the neck, which, believe me, can be just as damaging as getting hit on the chin. Okay, here we go. There's a little slip. Bam, a right hand. So Ugas just slipped to his right and came back over the lazy jab with the right hand. And the ropes, basically, the referee is saying the ropes saved you from going down, therefore I'm calling it a knockdown and giving you a standing eight count. And that's pero exactly tú tienes que estar vivo, Seri. Toma agua. No, de preocúpate de soltar lo que tiene que tocar. Deep breath for me, deep breath. Now, Joe Figueroa, in preparing for this fight, you know trains himself. Two, okay? right, that's deep never breath. a good thing. Uh, and, and I think that's self explanatory. You need a trainer on your back at all times, six days a week. So a good start for your Dennis Ugas coming off a split decision loss to our colleague Sean Porter back at March. You're holding. Okay. You're holding. Yeah, I was going to say, Ugas doesn't really need to hold unless he doesn't feel comfortable inside with Figueroa. Well, he's proven to be the better inside fighter right now, so you're right. I mean, budge uh, Omar. Ooh, those uppercuts are really working on Figueroa being delivered from Ugas. He threw three in a row, right, left, right. Body shot by Ugas. Stop! Now, I will tell you, if, if Omar Figueroa... Oh, here he goes, here he goes. What? He's going to take a point. You're holding. Stop holding. Stop holding. All right, that's another Box. warning for holding. If Figueroa can weather the storm these early rounds here, don't put it past him to make this thing a real fight. If Ugas doesn't stop him early. That's a nice little right uppercut by Figueroa. Well, you know, I feel Ugas should really take a couple steps back and give himself punching room so he can actually land the punches. Kawhi Leonard on hand. Lennox, I know you attended some of the Raptors games during the postseason. Oh, yeah. We are the North. He's the main player, and let me tell you, he's an unbelievable person, personality, great player. He, 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 remind, he reminds me of Mike, Michael Jordan, just how, his play, how he plays. Now a member of the Los Angeles Clippers, of course. Yeah. Uh, won a championship in his only season in Toronto. Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Manny Pacquiao versus Keith Thurman is sponsored by Innovate Motors. By Takate, the official beer of boxing. And by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Joe Lennox, you were both all in. <laughs> Who won that big pot, by the way, at the end of the day? I forgot. Well, the one that's celebrating the most. <laughs> that was you. I thought it was Heidi. 
No, oh, that's true. I think we all Listen, have. nothing beats two, two aces. Come on. Big night of boxing here on pay-per-view. Coming up next, Pacquiao and Thurman. This is round three, scheduled for 12 in the welterweight division. Omar Figueroa Jr. unbeaten in his career. Svertalo, Svertalo. Your Dennis Ugas. Svertalo. At 23 and four. Svertalo. He's never been knocked out. Three of his four losses have come by a split decision. Does anything surprise Svertalo. you to this point, Lennox? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, like Svertalo, I said, Svertalo. Ugas can give himself a little bit of room by just stepping back and uh, you know, different ways to give him different angles so he can get his punches off like that. Exactly what I'm talking about. Take a step back, throw an uppercut or a hook. 40% of the fight has been in close range to this point. Look at the punches landed. In the, in the first three rounds, there's been a lot of action here, a lot of really hard shots to the body that I'm sure haven't gone unnoticed by the fans and us uh, right there. There's a couple more delivered by Ugas. So they're really digging. Another thing that uh, Omar Figueroa does well, even if he's being held, he gets that one hand free and he'll start nubbing you on the ear with his knuckles on either side. He's a relentless type of fighter. So he's, he's not out of this fight. Even though Ugas, I think, is in control of it so far. It's never a good thing to sit on the ropes like that, is it, Lennox? You know, you know, that tells me one thing. He may not be in really good shape right now. But he's maybe a little tired. Let's get a second win. But right now, it looks like Figueroa is stalling out on the ropes here. Yeah, I mean, Ugas is showing his strength by pushing him, pushing him up against the ropes. I mean, when you push up a guy against the ropes, he doesn't have any place to go. So you know he's there. But Ugas is throwing some good body punches, yeah. good uppercuts, and they're getting through. Yeah, you saw him get under that uh, wild hook and land the body shot at the same time. Uh, Talk about uh, conditioning, Joe. Figueroa's sister handles his strength and conditioning. Thirty seconds remaining in round three. Nice exchange there. You know, Figueroa had a, a couple nice hooks digging in there, but Ugas, you know, answered back with a nice, solid left hook to the body. Now, you talked about either Omar Figueroa trained himself or his sister helped train him. I, I'm not sure which one is. Sister handles the strength and conditioning. His father, Omar Sr. On hand, there he is. And brother Brendan, unbeaten, 19 and 0. Super bantamweight, fighting for the interim title, August 24th on FS1. What a fighter Brandon is! Huh? We we did his uh, fight at the, the uh, Health Park uh, in California. Step up to the side. Uh, Get out, that, uh, escape through the side. Fighter who had never been stopped right before. He, he retired him. Okay. At some point during the fight, but he is a, he's he's relentless like Omar is, except he's a little bit fresher right now. Yes. Let's look at the end of the round. This is where Ugas was connecting, Thro throwing throwing a left hook uppercuts to the body, basically lining them up. There there it is, perfect. Ugas has landed 61 punches over the first three rounds. 59 of the 61 have been power shots. WBC welterweight title eliminator. A look at the punches landed. Punches landed by round. A knockdown for Ugas in round one. Stop. 
Let's check in with our unofficial scorer, Marcos Villegas. Marcos. Hey, Kenny, I got a 30-26 because of the knockdown that happened in the first round. I think so far it's been uh, Ugas with the better punches, the more powerful punches. Yeah, Figueroa is busy, but I feel that Ugas' punches are getting high attention, and you got to think that's the same for the judges' ringside. All right, thanks, Marcos. Lennox, Joe, do you agree? If you give giving Ugas all three rounds? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, again, I mean, Omar Figueroa is he's, he's the type of guy who will fight every round as hard as he can even if he's taking punishment which he is like that right there he walked right into two good uppercuts right to the belly right to the left uppercut and they just bang heads right yeah. there Clash of heads, they have to be careful and but the styles of, of the two boxes that's causing that referee's getting frustrated that Ugas holding a little bit well Ugas is kind of like locking up uh, Getting under the arms of Omar Figueroa. What's he going to do? Take a point? Or there must be a cut. Take a look at it, dog. Oh. Yeah, he's going over to the doctors to have Accidental Omar checked out. There's a cut. Accidental headbutt. Thank you. Stay right there. Okay. All right. Very good. You okay? Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Manos libre. Manos libre. We'll look back at the accidental headbutt. Manos libre. Manos libre. Blood from Suertalo. the forehead of Omar Figueroa Jr. Yeah, well, we, we saw him by his, but there's one thing for sure. Fights are almost never, ever, ever stopped with a cut on top of the head. The eyes under, over, it, yes but almost never on top of the head, so. Libre. And I'm surprised Libre. that Figueroa came out the worst out of that because of, of uh, where he hit him. Ugas on the face with his head. This is what Ugas needs to do. Change angles, yeah. take one step back and then fire. <laughs> 20 seconds remaining in round four. Scheduled for 12 in Las Vegas. Libre, manos libre. Stop! Let go. Let go. Time! Four rounds in the books. Earlier tonight, Keith Thurman in his locker room, and who came over to say hello? Your Dennis Ugas. Manny Pacquiao along with Miss Universe. <laughs> Pacquiao Thurman coming up on pay-per-view. Manny Pacquiao getting set to fight here at MGM Grand Garden Arena for the 15th time in his career. Manny Pacquiao turned pro at the age of 16. He was four foot 11. 98 pounds. He's been a professional boxer for 60% of his life. Dennis Ugas, 33 years of age. 2008 Olympian. And Omar Figueroa Jr., native of Texas, received an academic scholarship to Texas A&M. Had some offers to play college baseball as well. Former WBC lightweight champ. This only his third fight since the start of 2016. Stop! Due to a number of hand injuries and shoulder Here issues as well. One point holding. One point holding. One point holding. You got to stop holding. You're holding. You're coming around here. No mas. Okay? So one point taken away from Ugas here in round five. You know, I actually thought Ugas was really just trying to keep close and push, pushing him up against I the agree. ropes I instead of holding. I agree 100%. See, normally you get called for holding when you're trying not to fight. Okay, and that's not the case with Ugas right here. Now, I understand, though, if the referee is warning you, you got to take that to heart and not do what he's telling you not to do. So if he's calling that holding, 
and he doesn't like what you're doing, you, you better take heed and not do it, or he's going to take a point like he just did. And it would be different if Ugas had his hands inside instead of outside. On the outside, it always looks like you're holding. Exactly. And, you know, let's face it. You know, it's a tactic that you can use to your advantage. It's not. It's not a. It's not a Stop. move that you're doing to survive. It's a tactic that works well offensively, right? Yes. And now Russell Moore and Paul Figueroa, you're holding. Ooh. Midway through round five, look at the punches landed. Ugas with the advantage. You know, Figueroa is trying everything he can to get inside and to do something. He comes in southpaw, he switches to right hands on the inside, like he just did there. But he's getting caught halfway in between. Looks like they studied his style real well and have a good offense to defend against it. And I'm talking about Ugas' offense. But he's just so much bigger looking. And stronger. Yeah. And longer arms. Yeah. So he's using his reach right now, which he which is the good thing. Figueroa is kind of taking a little bit of time and not really rushing in as much. Trying to study Ugas before he goes in there. Well, we're in the fifth round of a 12-round fight. I mean, you know, at this point it's starting to look like Ugas is dominating round by round. And Figueroa's gonna have to land something real hard from mid-range to long range. And Actually, it's Ugas who's doing that right now. So, Figueroa's going to have a long night ahead of him if he doesn't land something substantial to get the respect of Ugas, which hasn't happened yet. See, Ugas has that hand, that right hand on the outside. That's, that's what makes the referee come in and say you're holding. Right. Time winding down in round five. Your Dennis Ugas represented Cuba in the 2008 Olympics, won a, a bronze medal. He's a close friend of Aroldis Chapman, now the New York Yankees closer, won a championship with the Cubs back in November of 2016. And he was at game seven and attended the championship parade as well with Aroldis Chapman. They met as youths. Both members of the Cuban Olympic program, good friends to this day. You're winning, you're winning this fight. I, I just don't want it to be more tight than it needs to be. All right, clean those gloves and let's go. You're the one that's fine, believe me. Just keep throwing the way you're doing it. Okay, let's go, let's go get them. Now our Felix De Jesus interpreting in the Ugas corner. 94% of the punches landed by Ugas have been power punches to this point over the first five rounds. Premier Boxing Champions returns to Fox on August 3rd from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Hands free, hands free. Pacquiao Thurman free, free. coming up next tonight Libre. on pay-per-view. <laughs> so Joe Figueroa trained himself leading up to this fight. If you were in his corner, what advice would you have given him following the last free. round? Well, it's, it's tough to give a guy advice when, number one, he, you know, isn't trained by anybody. So, you know, it would be hard to give a guy advice because he's probably not in the shape that he should be in to take your advice, if you know what I'm saying. In other words, if you're training a guy, he's going to be able to follow your advice because you've been working on it. But if you're training yourself, there's, you're really doing yourself a big disfavor. What would I tell him to do right now? I'd be telling him, look, I mean, at this point, you know, you're, you're not going to beat this guy fighting him on the inside here or outside. What you got to do is land a big shot. You got to keep looking for it at all times. And that's about it. He's... Oh, there we go. Floyd Mayweather. Now, when I talk about Manny Pacquiao, that is the greatest fighter that ever laced him up right there. 50 and 0. Nobody ever beat him. And he beat Manny Pacquiao. One of the greatest of all time. If not the greatest. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. 
Pacquiao and Mayweather got together in the ring back in May of 2015 here at MGM Grand. It was Mayweather by unanimous decision. Will we ever see them in the ring together again? What do you think? There's always that possibility, you know, uh, Floyd's always in the gym. And uh, I'm sure Pacquiao wants a, a rematch of the, uh, the first fight because he wasn't happy with it and he wasn't in, in perfect shape. So he really wants uh, Floyd back in the ring so he can prove to the public that wasn't 100% him in the ring. If Manny Pacquiao were to win tonight, I think that might even be, it might be a possibility of that happening. Five seconds remaining in round six, scheduled for 12. And here we go. You got Omar Figueroa taking a lot of hellacious shots to the body and head. And he's basically running at Lugas as if he just wants to keep getting back into the action. There's really no quit in this guy. Oh, oh bit right by Ugas. Can't sit on the rope like that, buddy. Okay, I know, whether you're good or not, I, I, you can't sit on the rope like that for us. Okay, we're not gonna sit there and watch you do that. Yes. We know damn well you can get off them ropes. Get off of them. All right. Water. Yeah. He's resting on you too. You gotta add more pressure, but you gotta spin off. Spin off. Trust me, you spin off, you're gonna catch this guy at a different angle, and he's not gonna like it. You, and you know what? We're going into round seven. You gotta start picking up that pace. This is where the, uh, separate the men from the boys here, all right? You ready? Yeah. All right, show us you're ready. Deep breath. Well, you know, after listening to what went on in the corner there, they said a couple of things. One of them was, we're not going to allow you or watch you sit on the ropes and take that. So, in other words, if you keep doing that and you're vulnerable and taking those types of punches, we'll stop it. On the other hand, they said, look, you've got to apply more pressure. In other words, this is where we separate the men from the boys. If you really want this, you've got to go out there and force your will on, on Ugas and land something big. They don't just mean you know, putting pressure on them without some results. They're, they're saying put pressure on them and land something solid to hurt them, knock them out, and turn this whole thing around. It's a tall order. Ted yeah. Lucio in the corner. Omar Figueroa Jr.'s cut man with the advice. You're right, Joey. So it is a to tall order. Yeah. I mean, um, to change his plan right now of what he's doing is, is kind of difficult halfway through, through a fight, but the trainer was telling him some right things to do. You know, give him some different angles. Don't be in there close with him. Throw some major punches. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he told him, he says, he kept, turn him, turn him, turn him. Well, he just did that. Omar Figueroa did turn him, but Ugas, you know, really locked onto him and turned with him like a dance partner. So it really didn't do him any good to turn him. He's got to land something solid. I mean, you know, is really sometimes it's the simplest things that need to get done. Once again, we check in with Marcos Villegas. Marcos. Kenny, I got your Dennis Ugas pitching a shot out in this fight, 59 to 53, as you see right there, round number five, because of the point deduction. It gets scored a 9 9 round. Doing a good job of blocking a lot of these shots from Omar Figueroa, and you see right there, landing a big, powerful shot to the body of Omar Figueroa Jr. So I have him up plenty full in this fight. All right, thanks very much, Marcos. 59-53 on his scorecard. No rounds to this point awarded by Marcos to Omar Figueroa Jr. Final minute of round seven. Look at the total power punches. Ugas has landed 35 percent. Figueroa 23. See, when Ugas goes to the body, he's more successful than going to the head at the moment. They, they definitely seem like they make Omar Figueroa cringe a lot more when he gets hit to the body than the head. He takes a great shot to the head, Figueroa. But I see him react adversely when he gets hit with those body shots. 
You can see he's not exactly real tight and trim around the waistline. Well, there was two two nice shots of the body and then finished with a hook to the head. There it is. Well, he's just teeing off on the wall. Figure it out. He's not budget. No, he's throwing one punch and then, you know, you guys is just answering with four. And that will do it for round seven. And here you go, Figaro coming out with a slow hand. And Ugas taking advantage of that, throwing punches to the body and up the middle because that's where Figueroa's head is. It's, okay. not, it's not like it's moving from side to side, it's staying in the middle. Reggie Bush on hand, member of our Fox broadcast crew, college football. Big noon kickoff premiering Saturday, August 31st on Fox. Just provoke him a little bit more so he can open up even more. Or you're lighting him up. You're lighting him up. You gotta keep maintaining this. We're good. Join us on Twitter. Let us know who you got in tonight's pay per view main event Pacquiao and Thurman. Tweet your vote to at BBC on Fox. It remains 71% Pacquiao, only 29% say Keith Thurman will be victorious and remain unbeaten in his professional career. It's coming up next on pay-per-view. Manny Pacquiao getting set for his 71st professional fight, 15th here at the MGM Grand. How impressed are you, Lennox, with Ugas? Uh, very impressed with Ugas. Uh, he's always a strong fighter, and, uh, you know, he always fights to win. He throws some powerful punches in there. And, you know, the game plan for this fight was, was perfect. I mean, he's throwing the punches in the right area, up the middle. He's electing to throw to the body, and he's electing to uh, throw uppercuts and hooks, which he needs to do. Now, I will tell you, and I agree with everything you just said there, Lance, but I'm going to tell you something right now. Who gives his corner said you're really lighting them up right now. And if I'm in the other corner with Omar Figueroa, I'm going to be telling him, look, if you're not going to get something done real soon here, because you have, you've lost every round so far, that I'm going to stop this fight. Because really, he's taking some really hard shots right now. If he gets lit up for the next round or two like that, why not stop the fight? It, 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 it's not going to turn around for Figueroa. Stop. Chances are 99%. Right, it's not like Figueroa is throwing any heavy punches. That's right, there. that's exactly right. That's my point. If he, if, if he was a real big power puncher, I'd say, you know, he's got a shot. Like, you know, Molina did at one point with me. He lost nine rounds and came back in the 10th round and won it with one shot. So the numbers only seven body shots landed by Figueroa so far tonight. One thing I also wanted to add, it goes to show you just how good Sean Porter is because he nullified all of the stuff that uh, Ugas is doing to Figueroa here. Now he's going to probably get a point taken away. No, I think it was an accident. Oh, warning. It was an accident. Well, he, blow, but, blow. But Ugas really pushed. I got you. you tell me a, when you're ready. A, what are you saying? Uh, accidental okay. low blow? Yes. Punch is up. That's okay. It. Get him up. All right. Yeah, that was a little low. That's straight to the low. Ugas losing his last bout at the hands of Sean Porter by split decision back in March. Sean getting set for his next fight against Daryl Spence on pay-per-view. September 28th in Los Angeles. Joined us earlier tonight, filling your shoes, Joe. You're at ringside. Oh, yeah. Sean's a, Sean's a multi-talented man. Let me tell you, he's great in the ring. There's another big right hand. Oh, oh, another right by Ugas. Look at Figueroa. He just refuses to sit back and take it. He, he wants to get every punch back he can. And he got hit late after the bell was left up. That's after the bell. Do you understand? Come here. 
Russell Moore, the referee, warning Ugas about that late punch. It's coming up next, Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman on pay-per-view. Thurman, all smiles in his locker room. The WBA Super Welterweight Champion. This will be his fourth title defense. There's Pacquiao with the legendary Hall of Fame trainer, Freddie Roach. Freddie's confident. He placed a $5,000 bet on Manny Pacquiao tonight. Freddie telling us Manny's speed is still there. He said he's still hungry and aggressive. Will pressure Keith Thurman. And he also told us, I like when Manny goes into a fight angry due to the crash talk. And there certainly has been some talk from Keith Thurman over the last couple of months. Keith has probably been doing more of it than Manny. Manny's a pretty mild mannered guy at this stage of the game. Yeah, most of it has come from Keith, for sure. Round nine, scheduled for 12. WBC welterweight title eliminator. Your Dennis Ugas in command. Looking to hand Omar Figueroa Jr. his first loss as a professional. Yeah, Ugas is just so slick. If you want to play an inside game with him, he makes these quick head movements, these quick slips to the left or right, and counters you before you even get a chance to get your hand down. As Lennox gets sprayed with some sweat from ringside. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he really is. Ugas is a, a, a counter puncher extraordinaire. Very smart. See, Ugas is looking at the head because he wants to hit the head, but the, the body was, is there for him anytime he throws a punch. Don't worry, he'll go back to it. Ugas has been there right there, you know. He just ducked two great shots downstairs. Power punch is landed by a round. Ugas by a three to one margin. Two things are going to happen here. You know, either it's going to keep on going this way, and Figueroa is going to take the pounding up until the 12th now. He's going to, or he's going to get lucky, which is doubtful. But I think after this fight, Figueroa has got to reconsider whether or not he's strong enough to be up at 147. He just does not look as powerful or big as most of these guys at 47. No. Uh, I didn't see one punch that hurt Ugas one bit. Not even. And, you know, Ugas is not throwing. He's, he's pretty comfortable out there. He's doing what he needs to do. And that's throw combinations to the body, trying to get some uppercuts in there. Final minute, round nine. I mean, Omar Figueroa should get the bravery of the year award, seriously, for the, you know, for the punches he's taking, the punches he's taking from Lucas. And really, isn't really flinching much. Does it get wobbled or off balance? He, he takes him and he keeps on coming. Oh, big right by Ugas. I got a feeling if Ugas steps it up a little bit, this, this the fight may be the yeah. end. Either the ref or the, the corner will, will stop it. But look, we've got 10 seconds left here. And he made it through another round. Figure out. And jumps right back into the action. Nine rounds of the books to Heidi Entrell. Heidi. Thank you very much, Kenny. Well, all week and all month, we've been talking about Manny Pacquiao taking on Keith Thurman. And when Manny Pacquiao arrived, this is just another day in the office for him. You know, he's been through this before. This is his 15th appearance in this building. He's fought Floyd Mayweather here. He's fought legends. For Keith Thurman, he pulled out all the stops. In his last fight, remember, he trained at LA Fitness for Josecito Lopez. For this one, he hired two strength and conditioning coaches to get him in shape. He's more focused than he's ever been. And in fact, he actually slept in a hyperbaric chamber five nights a week. He's newly married, as we've talked about. I asked him, how'd the new wife handle that? He said, well, she slept on the couch right next to the chamber. All right, guys, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks very much, Heidi. Lennox, did you ever sleep in a hyperbaric chamber? No, I, uh, no, I didn't. I just went to the hills. 
I All went right. a high altitude and, uh, you know, I love running hills. That was one of my favorite part of training. Pacquiao Thurman coming up, following Omar Figueroa Jr., your dad is Ugas. This is round 10, scheduled for 12. Ugas in command right from the start. Punches landed, Ugas at 187, 113 for Figueroa. Ugas went the distance in each of his last two fights, both 12 rounders. He's ranked as the number five contender for the WBC welterweight belt, currently held by Sean Porter. Who defeated Ugas back in March. A lot of respect between Porter and Ugas when we met with Ugas yesterday at our fighter meeting, Sean Porter was in the room. And they embraced, gave each other hugs on both ends when Ugas entered the room and then when he left. Well, I gotta tell you, I, I, I've got ultimately much, much more hurt as I had a lot of respect for Sean Porter before this fight. But watching how good Ugas is against just the notch below the, the, the top guys in the world. You got to get Sean Porter. You got to go. Wow, he really performed really well against Ugas, like nobody other. Well, you say Ugas is a notch below. I say he's a, no. He's, I didn't say that. I said Figueroa. Oh, okay. So. Notch below these 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 guys right here at the way. I mean, a lot of people figured that Figueroa was going to have a much better fight and perform and compete much better in this fight against Ugas than he has right now. I talked to a lot of people that know this game well. They thought Figueroa was going to be in this fight all the way. Well, he, he's in the fight, but not in the fight. Right. Now, to tell you the truth, Uga, uh, Ugas has kind of slowed down with uh, his aggressiveness. I, I would think if you really worn down Omar Figueroa to this point, then you'd be trying to close the show, right? Yeah. He's got 30 seconds here, but let's see what he does. Right there, now he's starting to open up. He would have made a nice scene. Instead of grabbing there, if Ugas would have made a nice little pivot, I think he could have caught him from some angles and, and kept the flow going with the punches. Yeah? Yeah, Ugas is, is a little bit stubborn. You know, he doesn't want to really take that step back. He'd rather push, push back and get some room. Sometimes that can get a little dangerous because you know, the referee can warn you for pushing. Hey, buddy. Championship rounds, okay? Head, head, head. Come on, Holmes. Come on, baby. All right? I need you to throw punches, baby. Throw punches, please. You gotta finish off these two rounds. Baby, you're spinning my face. <laughs> you gotta finish these two rounds up. Okay? Let's close out the fight. Close it out strong. Just finish it. You're doing good. He's Just slow. Away. He's slow. He's, but, you, but you gotta find the right shot. Double jab. Finish it up the middle and dig here. Okay? Come on. Put it together. Put it together, please. Yeah, he's closing you need to close out strong. Come on, baby. I know you can go. In round 10, Omar Figueroa Jr. landed only four punches. He threw 31 fight lows in both categories. No, no, Swertalo. This is round 11, scheduled for 12. Stop! Let go. Let go. Let go. Who oh. got scored a knockdown way back in round one. And he's been in control right from the start. Our co main event, Pacquiao Thurman up next. Oh. 
was that little turn that I was looking for right there. I think uh, you know, Ugas, it's, it's really target practice right now. Omar Figueroa is just having a hard time landing anything of substance. And again, I, I probably would have stopped this fight after the last round, to tell you the truth. They're not, they're not looking to soft, stop this fight one bit. They want to make it through these two rounds. What about you? I mean, really, do you, do you think it's worth taking six more minutes of this type of punishment when, when you don't need to? I mean, do you stop. think he's going to come back and win this fight? No. No, not at all. So, again, I ask you, would you, if you were in the corner, would you? I, I would stop the fight, yes. You would? I would. But, you know, boxers won't agree with that. I know. <laughs> He'll say, well, why did you stop the fight? You know, it's just getting stronger, so, and, you know, this is his fight. I don't disagree with that, but that's that's what you're there for. I mean, as a cornerman. No, I agree. Stop! Let go. And, and believe me, I'm not holding against this corner because, you know, Figueroa, look, he's still coming hard. And he would probably be very, very perturbed if they did stop it. But again, to, to what end? I, I, you know, right now. I just think to preserve the fighter a little bit, let him fight another day at the right weight against the right guys, but this is not the ninth one. It's got to be hard for his father, who was sitting ringside, and his family to you to watch this. Oh, yeah, you can see it on his dad's face. His dad's not happy. Down to 20 seconds remaining in round 11. Figueroa smiles. That's it. One more left. That's it. One more. We got this. What you need? Let's box. Box them. Let's go. You're winning it nice, but now we got to box. Listen to me. You look better when you start boxing. So move around and hit him. You're moving, and then you come in. So fight him from the outside. Let's box this. Let's win this easy. And that's it. We go home. You keep moving yourself. And the hands up. But hitting him too. So the hands up and then keep hitting him. Remember, if you, if you get in close, they're going to take a point off, all right? You got to do that, okay? You box him. Thanks to our Felix de Jesus. Danny Garcia on hand, former two-division world champ. Let's go. Well, we spoke with Ugas and his people yesterday. They said this could be a career-changing fight on a big stage, on a huge card. And so far, Ugas has impressed. He has impressed. Uh, if You know, his corner told him the right thing to do last round. Doesn't doesn't make sense to take any chances in, out there, so it's better there if he boxes. It does look go. better when he boxes. Stop. I know how I would be feeling in, in this fight, you know. This guy's tough. I would love to look good. I would love to knock him out in this last round, so I would have I would go for it. It's not it's not like he has to worry about getting knocked out or getting hurt because he hasn't been hurt for the whole fight. So I would have told Ugas to go for it, go for it. See, I, I don't think he could get hurt, to tell you the truth, even if he went all out right now, Ugas. I would probably, you know, me as a corner, I like to see the knockout from my guy. I like my guys to get the knockout, especially when you've got a guy defenseless practically. Yeah, so you would tell him to go for it. I would. You don't like that idea? We agree on the same thing. Okay. I, just, I just said it. Oh, okay. Good. Sometimes I block you out, you know. I'm just <laughs> How did you enjoy listening to the commentary, Joe, during the Lipinets bout? No, actually, I, I've had a little problem with my headphones the last few minutes, so 
I, I didn't hear what was happening. All kidding aside. <laughs> you weren't tuning us out? No, no. Although, you know, at times, no, never. <laughs> One minute remaining in the 12th and final round. Jordanis Ugas, 2008 Olympic bronze medalist, won gold at the 2005 World Championships, gold at the 2007 Pan Am Games. Stop. Unbeaten here in Las Vegas, he's won his four previous fights in this city. Looking to hand Omar Figueroa Jr. his first pro defeat. Go, let go. In front, that's just in front. No, 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 no. Stop. Don't do that. Stop that. Don't hold. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. Ugas and Figueroa go the distance. Well, Lennox, we got a little recap here. Let's just start from the beginning. Look, there was the, that's how we started. A lot of uppercuts. There's that little slip past the jab, right hand, knocks. I'm surprised Ugas never threw a lot more overhand right hands like that because he was successful with that. Well, I think we're going to see a few more coming right about now. There's a nice little slip right to the belly. That's what I mean. He had all these cute little moves. There's a little chop, one, two, one, two. There's a right hand over the top. There's another one. Okay, so he's, he's throwing them, but he just threw a, a variety of right hands, a, a few over the top, straight ones, side-handed ones. So, you know, he really landed all night flush. And I got to give uh, Figueroa credit, man. He's, he's really got a, 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 a marble chin. I mean, you just can't hurt him. Yeah. Final numbers, power punches, Figueroa landed. 71, 21%. Ugas landed 214, 36% of his power punches thrown. Well, it looked to me like Ugas landed about 70% of his punches, to tell you the truth, not 32%, but he rarely missed. Right? Yeah, and you can tell Figueroa's a tough dude because usually when you land that type of percentage, the guy's knocked out. Yeah, something, 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 something gives usually. Time for the decision. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges scored about 119 to 107. All three in favor of the winner of this WBC welterweight world title eliminator, Jordanis.